a film that makes you wonder just how did we get here <laughs> on Film Threat Reviews. I'm Alan Ning, I was wearing a kit, and today we review Judas and the Black Messiah. It's the story of Fred Hampton, the chairman of the Chicago Black Panther Party, and his fateful betrayal by FBI informant William O'Neill. It's directed by Shaka King, stars Daniel Kaluuya, Lakeith Stanfield, and Jesse Plemons. Yeah, so this is an interesting movie. The, this, this comes out at a very interesting moment in history. To me, I wonder just how much of the... Uh, the Black Lives Matter um, momentum, um, you know, flavors this movie and and what it, you know, I, I kind of uh, I kind of fight between you know what I know is happening today with what I'm seeing on on my screen. What did you think of Judas and the Black Messiah? Well, I, it, you you do point out Black Lives Matter, and we have seen a lot of amazing movies from. Regina King's um, One Night in Miami. We have uh, this one. There is the uh, FBI MLK movie. There is the upcoming Billie Holiday, uh, United States versus Billie Holiday. We had Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And, and these movies were all shot before the pandemic, before there was a Black Lives Matter movement. Yet, uh, before the, George Floyd, for that matter. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Before all of that, and but there, there must have been something in the air that that just that made them all kind of come out at the same time and feel like they were made especially for 2020 or 2021. And I don't know how the if the universe works in strange ways to kind of make that happen, but you know. This story, I never knew. Uh, as a Canadian, seeing all the, the uh, these these things, like whether it was Billie Holiday, which we'll talk about, you know, next month, uh, or um, the MLK FBI documentary, it, this is all I'm learning American history as as I'm watching this, and I am just just I get angry. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I get so embarrassed for America. And listen, I am American. I'm dual citizen, Canadian and America. I get so incensed that this is still happening in 2021, uh, that we that we have not progressed much. But I also learned from movies like this how deeply ingrained this behavior is, how systemic it is, and how truly the road ahead is long. And it's not going to get fixed by a new president and vice president in the next four years. It's a long haul, long project. And I'm sad, but I'm happy that it's it's uh, the ship is turning around. And I think movies like this, regardless of what we think of them as critics, if we're going to critique the acting or the directing or whatever, a movie like this is important to know your American history. Fred Hampton, the leader of the Black Panthers, was 21 years old when he was assassinated. 21! He's a baby. I, it's incredible. I, I can continue to rant, but we yeah. probably maybe should talk about the actual. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, you know, you bring up the thing that I was thinking about was, you know, it's hard not to bring history, bring current events. To what point do do those things uh, influence the way you see the movie itself? I mean, in a way, you know, we are here to judge what's on the screen, you know, and, and I try not to bring as much outside bias as I, as I can, but it's, it's hard not to. I mean, I think I have a, a more sympathetic understanding of Black Lives Matter thanks to this movie and the, you know, and, and what got us to this point after seeing this movie, um, you know, you, you really get a sense of, you know, Fred Hampton's viewpoint in the sense of, you know, his outrage, his feelings of uselessness, but also at the same time, you know, he's he's embracing certain philosophies that I don't necessarily agree with, but I understand why he's why he's going that direction. And then his viewpoint of, you know, what the thing that struck me the most was this, you know, we're, we're coming just out of the McCarthy era at this point. You know, there still is a, a fear of communism um, and and you know, and you see this balance between 
the rhetoric versus the actions. You know, the the rhetoric of the Black Panthers of Fred Hampton were very um, revolutionary, and I think that's what scared a lot of people. But the philosophy behind it was not as revolutionary or, or as scary or pervasive as people as as the FBI J Edgar Hoover thought it was. So okay, so let's talk about this common denominator. It, uh, we have the assassination of Fred Hampton. We have the assassination of Martin Luther King that happened, which mm -hmm. you can see in the FBI MLK film. We have the upcoming Billy Holiday movie where- And Malcolm X to, to add to, to that. Oh, Malcolm X in One Night in Miami to add to that, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then in the upcoming Billy Holiday movie, she is targeted by the FBI mm -hmm. and uh, the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. And in, and in all of these cases, it's the FBI acting on behalf of the government who are literally afraid of these people. They're afraid of what would happen if Billie Holiday sings Strange Fruit. They're afraid of what will happen if Martin Luther King continues to, to, to espouse the views that he does, or Malcolm X, or Fred Hampton. They are, they are operating out of fear, and they're using their status as government officials to quash these legitimate people who have leg who are have a right to have these views and a right to make a difference and a right yeah. to protest. And, and, and let's not forget also, this is both parties. You know, it started with, uh, you know, Kennedy and the Democrats. And, and at this point, Nixon is in office and nothing's changed. You know, a change in party did nothing. You know, again, we're, I'll bring back the McCarthy era. There was a real fear of communism. You know, we were blacklisting everybody who might have been might have been, had inklings of being a communist at that point. And, and certainly the Black Panthers were embracing uh, a socialist message at a time. You know, uh, they were mentioning Mao in a lot of, a lot of their rhetoric. But also, Alan, the thing is, is because they couldn't legitimately nail these people because these were leaders or uh, at the forefront of movements who had real visions, um, um, and because they couldn't nail them on legitimate reasons, they would do horrible things like try to nail Billie Holiday uh, on her drugs because they yeah. were afraid of a song. They were they they released tapes of Martin Luther King's infidelities. Right. I tried to bring him down that way because they didn't have something legitimate right. on from a political. Fred Hampton. They they accused him of stealing seventy dollars worth of ice cream for a uh, school food program he went to he went to jail for three years for that you so know? these these charges these made-up charges against minority figures because they feared them so much that they would you know be the the next messiah hence the title yeah. of this uh, the black messiah that that they would somehow incite and and influence white people to do drugs or do this or do that i mean it's it is it, it's enragingly insane to me and and this is frustrates me that this is america just frustrates me yeah i know i'm like well you know par for the course <laughs> that's that's what we do um you know i i should we should probably now talk about the movie itself um, <laughs> yeah maybe we should. Uh, okay so this is this is where i get controversial um i okay so I will say this. Um, I should. I feel like watching it on my television was the worst way to watch this. Yeah. Um, I think I feel like maybe it might have been much more impactful if I was in a theater as opposed to in my you know better in my TV room in the uh, in the middle of the day watching it. Why? Um, well, you know, because okay, I'll tell you how I felt coming out and whether. And whether it's true or not, this is how I felt. Um, but I just felt like the movie was a historical retelling recount of what happened. Mm -hmm. And so I'm seeing the events that led up to Hammond's um, assassination. I'm seeing the uh, O'Neill's recruitment by the FBI and then what he did. Uh, I'm seeing things happen, but I'm not getting the sense of what's you know true. I don't think. 
I'll, I'll put it this way. I feel like current events that, that maybe the film relies too much on current events to fill in the blanks and get me to feel more outrage and frustration with what's going on than the movie itself. I, I, so, under, I understand what you mean by that because, um, because sitting down to watch the movie, you already know the ending, you know, who's going to get killed. And, and you know how the story is going to play out. So basically, you are watching uh, something play out that you yeah. know. So it kind of automatically takes away the level of suspense or the will he or won't he. Uh, and, and so uh, it, the, the spoiler alert is there before you even yeah. sit down to watch the movie. Um, for for me, um, it it was a little bit hard to figure out whose point of view are we following yeah. Judas, which is, which is the, um, the FBI informant or the Messiah, oh, yeah. which is Fred Hampton, because we kind of vacillate between following each one. And uh, so there are times when I feel like, um, uh, Bill, I think his name is like, William O'Neill. Yeah. William. Uh, I feel like, Oh my gosh, I hope he doesn't get caught or, Oh, is this the moment that he's going to, and yeah. I'm rooting for him not to get caught, but at the same time, you're rooting for Fred Hampton not to die. And the only way for him not to die is if, if Fred Hampton, uh, if, um, uh, William gets caught and the only way for Will, uh, and, but if William gets caught, then Fred Hampton won't die. So yeah. you're, you're, you're at this discord because you don't know who to root for. And when you are rooting for the person whose point of view you're watching, it's the it, it'll have the opposite effect of, uh, yeah. of what we're rooting for. Does that make sense? I don't, yeah, I don't know. No, yeah, it does. Uh, you know, honestly, I was rooting for Hampton all the way. Um, you know, the moment he came on screen, the moment Daniel Kaluuya went, came on screen, presented himself as Fred Hampton, I was I was bought. I was in. I was, I love this character. Um, I'm following it. And what that did was then. But the thing is that occurs. Uh, just at the end of the first act. The first act is about uh, William O'Neill. Um, and that's who I was rooting for. That's right. And, but that's that's I'm the sorry. thing is, is there, they set up, uh, I'm sorry, I'll just, they're yeah. setting up William O'Neill as this, as the character. And all of a sudden they bring in Hammond and now you just shifted all your alliances to him. And that's kind of how I felt. And yeah. so what the, the drama and the tension that now happens with O'Neill uh, is lessened. I there was a point where it's like, okay, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm not feeling the tension of 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 the predicament he's in now at this point. Well, so that's see, that's the thing. Like, I was told that this was our guide to follow, and so I'm like, dang, mm -hmm. now he has to betray his own people, and oh my gosh, and he's he's he doesn't want to do this because you could tell like he's getting into the cause of the Black Panthers, and he seems to be like a legit good guy, but He's also a hustler who's who's betraying everyone because he's getting paid and 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 so I, when Hampton came in, I was like, okay, cool, all right, like I, this guy's cool. This is this is this is the, yeah. the guy, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to root for him now, but I'm already invested in William, so I'm just gonna stay invested and see how that plays out. Yeah. So yeah. So you stayed invested. I I abandoned. <laughs> my investment went on uh yeah and that's uh, you know that's the inherent the problem with the narrative of this story and yeah. the other thing is you know i think you know you hate to say it but you know if you compare it to like selma to uh to uh to malcolm x you know there's they, they show the atrocities uh to a very severe degree to to build sympathy for the cause and i I, that's why I say I think they're relying more on current events to build that than to present it into the film. And so I wasn't really feeling, you know, honestly, a lot of the uh, the um, the systematic racism, the the abuse of the police was a lot of it was told either in flashback or in story. The 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 whole the whole issue that got um, Hammond in jail stealing seventy dollars worth of ice cream that was all that was exposition. Someone. Yeah talked about it we didn't see it you know so so all of a sudden someone mentions it and now he's in jail and so you're not building 
uh, enough sympathy for that character to make that moment that impactful. Yeah. Um, which is the power of film at this point. It, yeah. It, you know, and so, you know, you know, so this is the balance of, um, or this is the the uh, catch twenty two for film critics. It's like this is such an important important issue. Um, Black Panthers are a big part of civil rights history, um, but at the same time, if you're going to make a movie about it, you've got to there's a, there's a weight and gravitas you've got to bring to it, and I I just felt like the movie didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I agree with you. So so you expected much more from a filmmaking standpoint. Um, and uh, you you liked the performances, uh, but it was just who do you follow kind of thing that was there for you, so, which didn't quite work. And um, and so I I think you you gave the movie a, somewhere between a six and a seven. I, I can't quite pinpoint your yeah. thought. No, I gave it a. I mean, it's to me, it's still an important film to watch. Um, you know, I, you know, if you're going to compare it to Malcolm X or to um, to Selma. Or to other films of this time, even the Trial to Chicago Seven, um, you know, this one falls far short of those, and and it's a shame because it shouldn't, it really shouldn't have. And uh, you know, I wanted to like it a lot more, but but again, if if I want people to understand the Black Panthers, uh, where we are today, uh, you know, this is a good movie to do that. It just yeah. could have been a whole lot better. So um, give it. A, a oh, seven. I'm sorry. I gave it a seven. Uh, actually, seven and a half. Okay. Um, so I'm feeling maybe that you're feeling the same way. Um, so I'm going to say seven as well. Yeah, I, I give it a seven uh, because it it sort of is. Um, it's it's the I don't want to use the word definitive because I don't know all the. No, it's not. It's not definitive. I think yeah. I think there is a definitive movie coming down the pike. There has yeah. to be. But, but I, I mean, in terms of so far, right? Yeah. It's so far, in terms of. The Black Panthers. I mean, in in the the trial of the Chicago Seven, there is a little bit of Black Panthers in in there, uh, uh, but that's just a really tiny plot point uh, of the entire film. Uh, but this is the so far the definitive <laughs> film about the Black Panthers. So if if you truly want to understand history and and you and you want to be entertained by it, because it's not this isn't a horrible movie. It's not like, oh go watch this, know your history. I know the movie sucks, but you'll learn a lot. No, the movie doesn't suck. That our two leads are very charismatic. Our two leads are are great. I mean Kaluuya and Lakeith Stanfield, they're they're fantastic. I mean they will there's awards recognition coming down the pike for uh for for one if not both so there this movie does have a lot to offer um from that standpoint as well but it is it but it does have it does have its its problems and issues yeah. it's not as smooth ride of a film yeah i i would say it it doesn't it need to go further than it did you know I, and uh, kalia i i i was bought in the moment he stepped on screen um and you know you mentioned again uh, you know, it's it's history. If you want to know what happened during that time, this is this film gives it to you. Yeah, and it's it. Black History Month, so um, this this movie couldn't be more timely. So um, cool. give it a whirl, really. Yeah, and I believe this is Netflix. No, no, this is uh, HBO Warner Max. Brothers. Yeah, Warner Brothers. Yeah. So theaters and uh, and, and HBO, HBO Max. Max. Right. All yeah. right. Very good. So uh, yeah, let us know what you thought of Judas and the Black Messiah. Like, subscribe, comment below, and with that, let's get out of here.